Hello there. This is a picture about visiting a generation ship. And the generation ships are little pieces of uh, mystery sort of scattered into the game. It's part of the story of the game, story of Earth's expansion out into the galaxy. They're all fantastic little visits. They've all got their own little stories and the voice acted logs as well so that you can really get immersed in the story and really enjoy it. The good thing about it is because although these were deep space ships, they were designed for traveling in deep space. They, they traveled in real time because they were built long before the invention of the faster than light technology we've got these days. So that makes it a perfect destination for your first real trip to investigate and explore, I'd say. I think that uh, exploring is overhyped. I mean, you can do quite extreme things to your spaceship that you can blow on it and it'll just explode that make it so that it can travel great long distances. But actually, for your first journeys, you don't need the most massive frame shift drive ever. I visited this in a Cobra and I've drawn the Cobra that I visited it in. The Cobra is quite... I have done quite a bit to it to make its jump range as long as it can be because I wanted to get there quickly. But I, I did my first bits of exploration in a Viper, uh, which was very stupid. I will concede that. But, but you can get well over 40 in a Cobra. And even without the Guardian Frameshift Drive Booster, that just means you're visiting more systems. So you're just doing more exploration. You're just seeing more places. You don't need to spend lots of cash. You can get everywhere in the bubble and there's tons of stuff to explore. These are all in the bubble because, like I say, they didn't have faster than light technology in those days. And they're just incredible places, wonderful tourist sites. And it's not all about making cash. Experiencing the game is about seeing these things, going to those nearby nebulae seeing the black hole at Maya, going to Jackson's Lighthouse. These are all things you can do in a Cobra. It doesn't need to be that paper anaconda that people use. I don't like flying an anaconda anyway. This Cobra has probably got, I will concede, a smaller power plant than it should have. I think it might be it might be even a class two. I mean, it's got a size four slot, but I think it, it's got a really small power plant. That means it doesn't have a lot of bang, but you don't need to do a lot of bang when you're exploring. You put D spec on everything, except for your fuel scoop. Pretty much everything can be D, because D is fine. It's just very lightweight material it's made from, which means your ship can jump further. I've done engineering on mine, but you know what? You don't, you don't have to do much more than visit Felicity Farcia. In Desiat, there's Felicity. She's the first engineer you'll have revealed to you anyway, really. And she's got a little ground base. You can visit her there. She will want a meta-alloy from you. And in order to get the meta-alloy, I went out to the Pleiades to fetch mine. I mined it myself. But that's become a bit more challenging over the years because a lot of those mining grounds, the meta-alloys, have been mined out. And I think there's probably just one ground base you can buy it. Daniel's Hope, I want to say. You can pick a ton up of it there. And that will probably do you for Felicity. Does mean you've got to drag it back. If you don't like the idea of doing that trip out to the Pleiades without your fancy ship that you're in the process of making, you can always have a little hunt round in Desiat. Do it in private group. Because <laughs> you don't want to be blown up. Because Desiat's where people blow you up maybe you enjoy it because it is just a game it doesn't really matter but if you want to achieve your stress-free exploration vessel you can go to a fleet carrier and buy a meta alloy which is fine just consider it part of the cost of the ship can't you once you've got that meta alloy you're all set to upgrade your frameshift drive with felicity farcia she really will make a lot of difference to it if you take your frameshift drive i've got a 4a on my cobra and I've done five levels of upgrading with the engineer in Desia. And then I put a special effect on it, which you do need to have materials for. But you can gather the materials you need to do that upgrading fairly simply and easily now with a limpet collector, just dropping into signal sources and seeing what you can scoop. I tend to keep searching until I can find a high grade emission source because you'll find tons and tons of materials in those. 
Even if they're not the ones you want, if you collect those, you can trade them across until you've got the ones you need for your blueprint. I, I use Inara a lot, Inara the website, and it enables me to see what materials I need to have to improve the module I want. I'll make sure I've got enough materials to do all of the upgrades I want to do on those modules. I've got a very small power distributor on my Cobra. It, it does boost, <laughs> but that's because I've made it specifically engine focused. I don't need it to do anything more than move the ship around that power distributor. I'm not going to take it into battle. Everything else on my ship I have lightweighted. I'm sorry, I, I'm wittering at you. I, you just need to buy D specification modules and then that pretty much will sort you. Make sure your frame shift drive is as good as it possibly can be. If you're going to buy a smaller power plant, probably that would need to be A grade as well. If you're looking for where to buy this stuff, somewhere like Diaguandri, Ray Gateway in Diaguandri, the Pauper's Shinrata, we all go there because it's cheap. 15% off for all your modules at Diaguandri and they have nearly all the modules, so it's a really useful system to use. On my Cobra, I've also got some heat sinks in case I hit a star. And I've also got a detailed surface scanner because you may want to go down on a planet and you may want to go and search some space veg. Which case, if you do that, you'll also need to make sure you're wearing an Artemis spacesuit and you've got a, a vehicle bay, a planetary vehicle hangar with an SRV in it. And make sure it's a Scarab SRV. Don't get some fancy weaponized SRV. Get the Scarab because it's got a scanner on it. And that's really useful because you can see signals for pebbles coming up on your horizon using the scanner. Anyway, I don't tend to bother with an AFMU. They're um, basically a little repair kit you can carry on your ship. I'd save your cash. If you're going to stay in the bubble, you're never going to be far from a repair. Anyway, I recommend going to see some of these places. The uh, Inra bases are very interesting, which you can find... Uh, have a look on the Canon, the Canon website, Canon Science. They've got quite a lot of interesting places to investigate there. If you connect the Elite Dangerous Market Connector, you can plug in a little Canon plug-in and that, and it will tell you interesting points of interest that are relatively near to where you are, wherever you are on your Market Connector display. And I find them fascinating. You can go on a little goose chase around all sorts of places. The Canon plugin is also very useful if you want to do any bio scanning because it's got a handy widget which enables you to see what biology is on the planet and how much you're likely to make for it, which is great because <laughs> you can make silly money out of space plants. Anyway, well, thank you for watching. I know that went on forever. Happy exploring and I shall probably be back soon. Bye.